Good day. Welcome to the third lesson of the subject Mathematics in the Modern World. We are Shara Asas and Ronaldin KB Bayan to discuss to you the second part of the second chapter. Let's have sets. Sets is a well-defined collection of distinct objects and is denoted by an uppercase letter. So in our example, we have your set A whose elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We use braces to indicate that the elements belong to the given set. So if in case that you forget to write braces, then it is not considered a set. There are two ways of describing a set. First one is the roster or tabular method. It is a method in which the elements in the given set are listed or enumerated, separated by a comma inside a pair of braces. Second is the rule or the, the descriptive method, method in which the common characteristics of the elements are defined. This method uses set builder notation where X is used to represent any element of the given set. Example, the distinct letters in the word math, let A be the set of distinct letters of the word math. So the roster form of this set, set A whose elements are M, A, T, H, and the rule form set A for all the values of X such that X is the distinct letter in the word math. Second example, the colors of the rainbow. Let P be the set of the colors of the rainbow. Rooster form B, set B whose elements are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And its rule form set B for all, val for all the values of X such that X is the color of the rainbow. And last example, an even prime number. Let C be the set of an even prime number. Rooster form, set C, whose element is 2, and its rule form, set C, for all values of X, such that X is an even prime number. Okay, let's now proceed to the types of set. First is the empty, null, or void set. It is a set that has no elements, which is denoted by this symbol. Example, the set of numbers in the English alphabet. Roster form and in rule form. Here is the um, example. It is an empty set because there is not a single number in the English alphabet. Next type of set, finite set, a set with a countable number of elements. Example, the set of letters in the English alphabet. In roster form, set F, whose elements are A, B, C, D, up to Z. In rule form, set F for all the values of X, such that X is a letter in the English alphabet. Next type of set is the infinite set. A set has uncountable number of elements. Example, the set of counting numbers. In roster form, we have set G, whose elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And in rule form, set D, set G, who, um, set G for all values of X such that x is a counting number. We have infinitely many counting numbers starting from 1, so it is considered as an infinite set. And lastly, we have the universal set, the totality of all the elements of the sets under consideration, which is always denoted by capital letter U. Example, the set of real numbers. So we have the universal set for all the values of x such that x is a real number. Take note that universal set is mostly used in operation on sets. Let's now proceed to the relation between sets. First is 
equal sets, sets with the same elements. Example, set A, whose elements are R, E, A, and D, and set B, whose elements are D, E, A, and R. As you can see, in equal set, the sets have the same exact elements regardless of the order. Second relation between sets, equivalent sets, sets with the same number of elements. Example, set A whose elements are R, E, A, D, and set B whose elements are 1, 2, 3, and 4. In here, we are just after the number of elements. So, if the given set has the same number of elements, then they are equivalent set. And remember, it can be noted that equal sets are equivalent sets. However, not all equivalent sets are equal sets. Okay, let's now have the third relation between sets. Joint sets, sets with at least one common element. Example, set E whose elements are 1, 2, 4, 11, 15, 18, and 20, and set F, whose elements are 1, 3, 9, and 10. Sets E and set F are considered joint set because they have a common element, which is 1. And last but not the least, we have the disjoint sets. Sets have no common element. Example, set E whose elements are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or a set of even numbers, and set F whose elements are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, or the set of odd numbers. Sets E and F are considered disjoint set because they have no common element. Let's now have subsets. We have two types of subset. The proper subset, which contains at least one common element from the main set, and the improper subset, which is the set itself and null set. Example, let's say that the main set is the universal set and the given sets are A, B, C, D, and E. And we are to identify what type of subsets are they. Example, set A, whose elements are 3, 4, and 6. This is considered a proper subset because it just has some of the elements from the main set. Then set B, whose elements are 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, and 10, is also a proper subset because... It also has just some of the elements from the universal set or the main set. Set C, whose elements are the same as the elements we have in the main set. So this is considered an improper subset. Set D, whose element is 3, is 3. This is considered an, or A, this is considered a proper subset and lastly set e an improper subset as per the definition of the improper subset so there are only two so just remember that improper subsets are either null set or the same set as the main set and proper subsets contains some elements or at least one element for from the main set Next we have is the power set, set containing all the subsets of the given set. In power set, we are able to find how many subsets are there in a given set. Let us know how many subsets are there using the formula 2 raised to n, where n is the number of elements. Example, Set A whose elements are 3, 4, and 6. Since there are only 3 elements, you are going to substitute 3 in N. So we have 2 raised to N, which is equal to substituting 3, which is will be equal to 2 raised to 3, which is equal to 8. 
meaning there are a total of 8 subsets in set A. And what are these subsets? We have subset 1, 3, 4, or 4, 3. Subset 2, 4, 6, or 6, 4. Subset 3, 3, 6, or 6, 3. Subset 4, 3. Subset 5, 4. Subset 6, 6. Subset 7, 3, 4, and 6. And subset 8, null set. Take note that in power set, both proper and improper subsets are included. Let us now have the last subtopic for sets. Operation on sets. The first one is the union of sets A and B denoted by A union B. A set whose elements are found in both A and B. Example, Set A whose elements are A, B, C, and D, and set B whose elements are C, D, and E. And we are to find the union of these two sets. In union of sets, we just combine the elements of the given sets. So that's why we have A union B is equal to the set whose elements are A, B, C, D, and E. Just like in this Venn diagram, we take the elements we have in set A and set B and even their similar elements. Next is the intersection of sets A and B denoted by A intersection B. It is defined as a set whose elements are common to both sets. Example, set A whose elements are A, B, C, D and set B whose elements are C, D, and E. And to find their intersection, and to find their intersection, we just have to identify the common elements in set A and B, and those are elements C and D. So that's why we have A intersection B is equal to the set whose elements are C and D. As shown in this diagram, we are just going to take the elements common to both sets. The third of Operation on sets is the difference of sets A and B denoted by A minus B. It is a set whose elements are found in set A but not in set B. Example, set A whose elements are A, B, C, D and set B whose elements are C, D, and E. As per the definition, we are to take the elements we have in set A. So we will disregard all the elements in set B as well as their common element. Now, we have A minus B is equal to the set whose elements are A and B. And A minus B can be represented as this in Venn diagram. And lastly, we have the complement of set A denoted by this A prime or the complement of set A. It is the set of elements who it is the set of elements found in the universal set but not in set A. Example, let U or the universal set be equal to the set whose elements A, B, C, D, and E. Set A whose elements are A, B, C, and D, and set B whose elements are C, D, and E. Let us try to find the complement of A. So we disregard the elements in A as well as its common elements in the universal set. And all we have left is element E. So that is why the complement of set A is the set whose element is E. And this is based on the given example. So this is what complement of set A is like in Venn diagram. Another example for complement of sets. Okay, universal set. Elements are A, B, C, D, and E. Set B whose elements are C, D, and E. And to find the complement of B, we will disregard all the elements in, in set B as well as its common elements in the universal set. So the complement of set B is the set whose elements are A and B. So that is for sets. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned.